Growing up, I never really like reading any books. The only kind of book that I read are school textbooks kasi those are requirements in order for me to pass my exams in school. And siguro a bit of more informative, factual, and trivial books like this book, Tell Me Why. And this one na sira-sira na this one is The Big Book of Facts. And also a bit of Reader's Digest kasi may dada sa monthly subscription of it so every month we receive a new one. I am a math and science guy growing up. I have zero art in me nung bata pa ako. And I only developed art nung nag-college na ako during my third year. And it was not supposed to happen kasi I was studying in engineering school and I am an engineering student. And yung art lang probably doon was yung design. So engineering design. But I was able to develop a different kind of art. It's more on social and business kind of art when I was in college, when I was in Mapua. But anyways, enough of my history with books. Let's proceed now to the top three books that influenced my life. The original book that got me to self-help books was Rich Dad and Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And I guess I discovered it nung third year college na ako. And it was not actually a physical book but a YouTube video. And yung din discuss it sa video na yun was uh, difference between rich mindset versus poor mindset. And I was automatically get hooked dun sa topic na yun. And I guess that's that's where yung interest ko was born. And dun na nagsimula yung journey ko into reading and learning more about self-help. Following that moment, I became really interested to learn more about self-help. So I was really into Kiyosaki books nung panahon yun. So the very first book that I bought physically was this book. So this one is uh, Rich Dads Increase Your Financial IQ. So let's just make a summary of this book. So how will I summarize this book? Is meron siyang minensyo dito na five uh, IQ that comes in this book. So I'll just mention it. So financial IQ number one, making more money. Financial IQ number two, protecting your money. Financial IQ number three, budgeting your money. Financial IQ number four, leveraging your money. Financial IQ number five through being your financial information. So, uh, daanan lang natin ito na mabilis. So, yung financial IQ number one, making more money. So, parang yung mention lang dito is to generate more money by being an entrepreneur or kung nag-work ka naman, parang get a promotion, get a higher, uh, higher paying job. Financial IQ number two, protecting your money. Yung protecting your money niya dito, it's more on parang sa uh, tax protection or tax shield. Kasi parang yung nag-take away ng money mo from you was yung, for example, dito na lang sa Local context was yung BIR, yung tax collecting, parang body natin. So parang yun, uh, make legal, learn legal ways to protect your money, parang to tax shield. And parang na-mention niya din dito yung mga donations or yung philanthropic uh, act ng mga uh, billionaires that also offset yung parang uh, nakukuha sa kanila ng tax collecting body nila doon. Financial IQ number 3, budgeting your money. So dito parang ano na to, ah, so dito pala nakuha yung sinabi ko before na always pay yourself first. So pagka kumikita ka, always pay yourself first. So ito yung parang pinaka main point ng budgeting your money. Financial IQ number 4, leveraging your money. Dito naman, ah, parang make your money work for you. Financial IQ number 5, improving your financial information. So parang i-update mo lang yung sarili mo to the new things na parang makapag-add ng money into your wallet. Another thing na gusto kong i-add dito was from yung sa book niya na Rich Dad for that yung isa niyang uh, parang thesis doon that a house is not an asset. Because in traditional ways, in an accounting way, parang oh, parang because a house is an asset pero in in an entrepreneurial way, hindi ganun. Because a house na tinitiyasa mo lang uh, for as long as it doesn't give you money in your pocket, it's not considered an asset. And parang yung parang pinoint out niya doon na uh, a house is one of the worst kind of investment. Kung titirahan mo lang siya, if you're going to make it as parang a renting place or anything na parang magbabalik ng money into your pocket, it becomes parang a true asset as an entrepreneur. Pero if titirahan mo lang yun, it's a very bad investment. Based on dun sa Rich Dad and Poor Dad niya, book. Book number two, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. So everything you need to know about how to deal with people, uh, andito sa book na to. And this is a great uh, human relations book. So again, let's just make a summary of this book. Again, this book is also a uh, breakdown into principles. So dito, yung fundamental techniques in handling people. So yung uh, principle number one, don't criticize, condemn, or complain. Principle number two, give honest and sincere appreciation. Principle number three, arouse in the other person an eager one. Okay, now with this one, this is something really important. So pay attention dito sa mga sasabihin ko. So these are the six ways to make people like you. Principle number one, become genuinely interested in the other people. Principle number two, smile. 
Uh, principle number three, remember that a person's name is to that person the sweetest and most important sound in any language. So remember, always remember your name ng taong kilala mo or nakilala mo. Principle number four, be a good listener. Encourage others to talk about themselves. So instead of talking more about you, para ask questions dun sa kausap mo kung para about him, about her. Parang don't focus yung conversation uh, with sayo. Instead, focus the conversation with the ones you're talking about. Principle number five, talk in terms of the other person's interest. So, ito talagang proven na to. In order for you to have a good conversation, dun sa kausap mo, parang, uh, or for you, for someone to like you, parang find yung common grounds nyo. So, ayun. Parang find that interest na pareho sa inyong dalawa. Principle number six, make the other person feel important and do it sincerely. So again, just do what this book says and do it sincerely and genuinely. And malalaman ng ibang tao pag kinifake mo yun. Lastly, summarize na lang natin to. So ito yung win people to your way of thinking. So parang paano mo sila mapapapayag sa way of thinking mo. So I guess lahat naman to parang pag binasa mo, it's parang take it as what it is. Except for this number this one parang principle number 5 get the other person saying yes yes immediately so ano ibig sabihin nito so parang for example may pitch ako so parang ito yung unang tanong do you want to do something fun so isasagot ng tao yes then yung follow up nudo na isa pang tanong is do you want to do something interesting then sabihin niya ulit yes or di ba parang uh, automatically you make him said two yes na magkasunod then you start yung pitch mo kung ano man yan Bas- basta dapat uh, it, make sure na it's fun and interesting yung gagawin nyo. Book number 3 is The Dip by Seth Godin. So let me just read sa inyo yung mga hinighlight ko from that book for you to get that concept of the book. But basically, it's about quitting. Winners quit all the time. They just quit the right stuff at the right time. Quit the wrong stuff. Stick with the right stuff. Have the guts to do one or the other. If you're not going to put the effort to be the best possible choice, why bother? Now, let me explain The Dip. The Dip is something that you have to go through on your path to success. It is the toughest, hardest part of the process and a lot doesn't make it out of the dip because they quit once they go through the dip. Now, the book emphasizes that you have to be conscious in your decisions and yung path na you take mo. Because everything na parang gagoy mo, there's a dip. And if hindi worth it yung dip, better not start it or better quit early. So, I guess yun lang yung pinaka meaning ng book na to and be hyper focused on the things na you're good at and parang eliminate mo lahat ng distractions na hindi mo kailangan. So parang yun lang, be focused on yung goal mo and eliminate the distractions or quit the distractions na gumugulo sa'yo. Successful people don't just ride out the dip. They don't just buckle down and survive it. No, they lean into the dip. They push harder, changing the rules as they go. Just because you know you're in the dip doesn't mean you have to live happily with it. Dips don't last quite as long when you whittle at them. I hope you find this interesting and you find it meaningful and you learn something from it. Uh, ayun, I hope you have a great Christmas. Alright, bye!